And then Honorable Oundo. Yeah, I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, let me start by congratulating the Budget and Appropriations Committee for the good work they have been doing in this term of Parliament and which they continue to do. And in thanking them, Honorable Speaker, let me also thank the various departmental committees who also contribute in a fundamental way to the budgeting process. And uh, my hope is that all their views were taken into account by the Budget and Appropriations Committee in finally, you know, uh, bringing the budget documentation before the House. Honorable Speaker, our problem is not budget. Our problem as a country is about budget implementation, which has failed consistently, Honorable Speaker, to adhere to the national values and principles of governance prescribed under Article 10 of the Constitution. Honorable Speaker, we pass budget. And let me start by saying there is a good reason as to why the budgeting authority was moved from the Treasury, from the Executive, to this House. This is the National Assembly. It is the Assembly of the Nation through their representatives. The thinking is that when we are budgeting and sharing out the national cake, I would be asking, what about Omape? Honorable Nikal would be asking, what about Seme? My brother, Honorable Roku, would be asking, what about the constituency of the people I represent? And, and, and we, 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 we do that during budget. But you know the problem, Honorable Speaker, is that we send monies to the ministries, to the government departments, and the sectors within them, bulk without itemization. Honorable Speaker, that is something we need to work on if you want to achieve the real reason as to why the budgeting authority was moved to this House. Honorable Speaker, I'm very happy that the Budget and Appropriations Committee on behalf of this Parliament has proposed that we are put, putting apart money to employ all JESS teachers. And let me disagree with the speakers who have just spoken that we should again be cherry-picking who among these JESS interns should be employed and who should not be. The fact of the matter, Honorable Speaker, is that what happened with the employment of the last 56,000 teachers in serious democracies would have occasioned this House to proceed and move all those commissioners out of office. They should have been removed. And this is what we are talking about. You employ 30 people. These JESS interns are waiting to be employed. But people other than JESS not JESS, Teacher Service Commission, are distributing employment forms outside there. And, then, and you see it in people including CSS. You see it in people including politicians. How do you ensure equity in that arrangement where some people are waiting for interviews by the Teacher Service Commission, which ideally is an independent commission, yet individuals who have no mandate around recruitment of teachers are walking around with employment letters? No wonder, Honorable Speaker, when you go to areas like ours, teachers are retiring without ever being employed. Teachers are, are retiring. I have over 200 teachers I've written to TAC. I've even written to the President. I have over 200 teachers who graduated in 2000, 2001, 2004. They cannot get a chance to teach and to serve the nation in the classrooms, bringing our children out. And, and yet, in some areas, Honorable Speaker, up to teachers who graduated in 2022 are already recruited. What do you want JESS interns to do when they sit waiting to be employed? They are told there is no opportunity. And outside there, Honorable Speaker, people are being employed in funerals. What do you want them to do? We must develop a deliberate policy, Honorable Speaker, on employment of teachers, which says teachers will be employed on a first to graduate first to be recruited basis, wherever they come from. In any event, they have been all trained. They have gone through practicals. What is this other interview you are doing again? Honorable Speaker, look at the area of energy. We sat assisting you, Honorable Speaker, the other time on Committee of Supplies. We are reading everything. After that, my entire constituency, including schools which were established before I was born, 
cannot be electrified. Not a single electricity project in this ending financial year. Yet we passed a budget for how much? All street lighting programs stalled in Omabe. And then when you come back, Honorable Speaker, you find all this money has been diverted to some single constituency. What are we talking about? We are developing an, an, an inequitable nation against the national values and principles of governance. How can it be, Honorable Speaker, that have been in, in this parliament passing budgets and duly authorized by the people under the Constitution to deal with budget? This, Honorable Speaker, is my 12th year of budgeting. No single tarmac road in Oma Bay Town constituency. And, and, and by the way, people looking at us are clapping as we are sending, did you say half a trillion money for roads, which they don't see? Here come, here go. The fact of the matter is that we have to go back to where President Kibaki left this country. President Kibaki would not implement a project, Honorable Speaker, and you are with him, without the people at the planning ministry looking at which project are we going for? How is it viable? Which one do we do next so that we can, uh, you know, make them, you know, economically more viable for the entire nation? And so under President Kibaki, they would come and say, we are moving a road from Lamu through to Isiolo, through to Ethiopia. Not just to open that area, not as a favor, but to harness the national potential in that area. Under President Kibaki, he would come here, Honorable Speaker, and say, we need such and such roads in Kisumu because it is a city. Look at what is happening currently. We're just doing things haphazardly. You remember President Kibaki would be approached by a politician in a rally, the way our presidents move around now, and then you tell them, <laughs> uh, your president, we want this and this project, and he tells you, but you're the ones passing budget. Did you see it in the budget? It is not properly planned. It cannot be implemented. We have caught into a situation where, again, the leadership of the nation has been left the entire budget by parliament. A leader visits Somabe, we dance do, -do to them, and you're told a road will be cutting from here to here. You go to a county and you say, we'll be giving you 500 kilometers of roads. Have you thought through to consider what those 500 kilometers would be doing to contribute to the national economics beyond these areas? I therefore want to say, Honorable Speaker, that going to the future as parliament, we will be required to at least come with a baseline in terms of minimums, which can go to areas. I mean, how does it please you when you say you are at 100% electrification? when other areas are totally dark. And yet we want to develop the entire country. And that is why we bring debates like one man, one vote, one shilling, one kilometer. Do people engaging in this debate, Honorable Speaker, have they visited Northern Kenya? Let me tell you, the day you visit Northern side of the country, you will thank those Kenyans who are keeping our territories there to remain ours. There are places, Honorable Speaker, even used bottle of water you are requested to drop. And by the way, it is very useful. But those people need to be there so that the territory of Kenya, as defined in the Constitution, remains intact. How much is it to move a road, a tarmac road, from one corner of Northor to the other corner, one constituency alone? How do you compare it to moving a road from one corner, for instance, of former Bay Town constituency, to the next? I just need seven kilometers and I've crossed. And, and, and so we must have a balance which ensures equity. Honorable Speaker, as we budget going to the future, let us remember that devolution is placed among the national values and principles of governance for a reason. There are places who only began seeing this thing called national resources through decentralized funds like CDF now under devolution. Honorable Speaker, we still take too much money which are meant for devolved functions to the national government. And so when you see the corruption under the health ministry, you see the corruption under the water ministry, you see the corruption under agriculture ministry, it's because these functions are devolved, but money is left here idling and therefore available to be stolen. Honorable Speaker, my last concern is in relation to the institutions we established to underpin good governance. Consistently, year after year, money is going to independent offices and constitutional commissions has been reducing. And, and we need to begin thinking, why was Article 249 of the Constitution placed there if, if we can be reducing that money? Because that, that, that provision says you shall adequately fund. I have oversighted commissions budgets where the old travel budget 
is less than 500,000. And this is a commission of over 11 people. And we are passing them here bulk. We are saying we should move that way. What are we doing with the independence of the judiciary? Can we give them money so that they are financially independent to do their work? Honorable Speaker, there will be much more to speak in terms of the policy directions. But I think time has come for Parliament to take charge of the budgeting function. Or we tell Kenyans, Parliament cannot do it contrary to what they envision in the Constitution. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Kiungi. Okay, thank you, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, I start to support uh, the budget and also recommend the committee its chair and all other members of the committee for the good work they have done. Mr. Speaker, I want to just touch on the issue to do with roads, whereby we have a lot of pending uh, ongoing projects which were left, like Mau Mau. And Mr. Speaker, like now, I cannot get home. The, because of the works that were left undone, it has, uh, due to heavy lanes, there were landslides, I cannot access my home right now. But Mr. Speaker, I guess, and I wish to uh, I pray, that they allocated 178 billion, will, much of the works will go to the paid-in works. But Mr. Speaker, as I start to as we recommend the committee for budget, we have a 